know that the New Zealand shares, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, 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 Mr. Chair, there are many reasons to feel angry about this mixed ownership bill, sir. There are many reasons. It amounts to a massive transfer of resources from ordinary New Zealanders as taxpayers to uh, the relatively small number of people who can afford to buy shares when these companies are floated, sir. Power prices will go up. We know that. We know New Zealanders will suffer. People who can, can barely afford to pay their electricity bills now will suffer. And we know that this privatisation programme makes no financial sense for New Zealand. Mr Chair, I want to talk about supplementary order number uh, 60. Uh, it, it basically uh, says that uh, uh, new clause 16A any proceeds generated for the Crown as a result of the sale or disposal of shares in a mixed ownership model um, must be paid to the New Zealand Superannuation Fund established after the New Zealand Superannuation Retirement Income Act 2001. One of the most galling things about this government's privatisation policy, uh, Mr Chairman, is the rather pathetic attempt to dress up the whole exercise in a thing that this government calls the Future Investment Fund. It is a transparent attempt to sugarcoat what is a very bitter pill for almost all New Zealanders, sir. And National, some, for some reason, thinks that the two-thirds, or maybe it's 80 per cent of New Zealanders who are opposed to this policy, will somehow be mollified by the idea that they are going to put the proceeds of this privatisation into some kind of notional, some kind of fictional future investment fund. It wouldn't, it, the only thing that's possibly more galling, sir, than this is that we've had to sit through today in the House uh, Tony Ryle, the Minister of State Owned Enterprises, speaking in hushed tones about the European financial crisis and suggesting to, suggesting to the nation that if the government doesn't privatise all these assets, somehow New Zealand is going to tumble into a global financial crisis and the world will come to an end. Totally overlooking the fact that the government's fiscal problems are largely a result of A, its unaffordable tax cuts, and B, its utter failure to get growth going in the economy. What are they going to spend the proceeds of the money on, sir? What, this is what they say. Schools, a lick of paint here and there. Hospitals. Uh, irrigation, and according to the, the budget, they're going to put uh, $250 million into Kiwi Rail. Well, as many commentators have pointed out, sir, um, this is all normal government uh, capital expenditure, and it's a nonsense to dress it up as if it's some extra future investment fund. I want to quote Paul Callow from um, Deloitte's, who, uh, who said that tagging the proceeds in this way doesn't really fool anyone. Money is money, and the fact that the government has just sold a stake in an SOE simply means it has more to spend or needs to borrow less. So, um, sir, it is, an, it is an absolute nonsense that in an energy-constrained world, we are now selling energy assets, these four precious electricity companies, to fund repairs on schools and hospitals. We're selling an income-earning asset um, to fund the maintenance on a non-earning asset. And that, I think, exposes the total poverty of thinking, sir, and of economic development behind this government's policy. The Future Investment Fund is a cruel hoax. It's a notional fund. It has no existence in reality. And all the items that the government has mentioned in recent months that it's going to spend the proceeds on, sir, are standard items of capital expenditure. And I urge members of this House, sir, to support, to support my uh, supplementary order paper, number 60, sir, that would, instead of, of spending, putting the money into this notional fund, it would redirect it at least, sir, to the New Zealand Superannuation Fund, the Cullen Fund, which at least would not fritter away the proceeds of these precious assets on the repair and maintenance of standard items of capital expenditure. But, but every New Zealander knows, sir, that that shouldn't be what happens anyway. What should happen is that this government should, should cancel this privatisation programme, hold on to these assets for future generations of New Zealand, hold on to them for the financial health of our nation, and so that this country has the strategic assets, energy companies that we need 
to, to guarantee that the nation has a secure supply of sustainable and affordable energy for future generations. If this government had a clue, sir, about economic development, it would not be selling this, these assets. And um, uh, if you look at the example of Norway, sir, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Phil Chair, Twyford. if you look at the example of Norway, which is the textbook study of a country that got the most out of its natural resources. Norway's state-owned uh, petroleum company, sir, in ensured that Norway's assets, that Norway's natural resources were exploited for the good of the Norwegian, for the good of the Norwegian people. New Zealand is a leader in renewable energy. And what is this government doing? What is this government doing? We're a leader in renewable energy and they're selling off, they're selling off the very assets that we own that will develop sources of renewable energy. So even, even if you consider, if, in, if you consider um, uh, our state in, uh, energy company, Solid Energy, and you think about the massive reserves of coal that this country has, that one day, that one day may, may be able to be exploited in a sustainable way, that it could be a huge resource for this country in years to come for future generations. And what are we doing? We're privatising the very company that would ensure that the benefits from those resources are enjoyed here and, and that, the, that the only uh, revenue stream for a future government is, is a 1% royalty. And I cannot believe how stupid uh, this policy is in that respect. If you consider Mighty River Power, sir, one of the world's ten largest developers and operators of geothermal energy, Mighty River Power is a fantastic success story in the New Zealand e energy industry. Geothermal energy is only 0.3%, sir, of generation internationally, but it is one of the parts of the global energy industry that is growing fast. It, is, it is, has huge prospects. Mighty River Power, it has, it's developing new plants, sir, in our Tamariki at Pukatoi Wind Farm, um, northeast of Rotorua, another one. It's also got a stake in the, in the, in the Geo Global Partners Fund, a US company um, that is developing a 50 megawatt geothermal plant in California. Mighty River Power is a treasure. It's a national treasure that we should be proud of. We should be keeping it in New Zealand hands so that it's owned by all New Zealanders so that the benefits of this in in innovative company are kept in New Zealand and are there for the generations of New Zealanders to enjoy. But what is this government doing, sir? It's, it's privatising those assets. It's giving away the future potential. Some of our most strategic assets, this government has no qualms about privatising it. I, um, what could be more strategic than energy companies and water companies in the 21st century? And instead, this government is selling it off for a short-term sugar fix to give it a little bit of debt reduction in a fiscal crisis of its own making, and it's going to use the proceeds, sir, to put a lick of paint on schools and hospitals, and it dresses up uh, that phony uh, financial transaction, sir, with this, with this ridiculous future investment fund, as if, sir, that this would sugarcoat what is a very bitter pill for all New Zealanders. The Future Investment Fund is a sham, it's a phony fund, sir, and I, and I urge members of this House to vote for my, uh, my supplementary order paper, sir, that instead of wasting the proceeds of this privatisation on, uh, on maintenance of standard items of capital expenditure, what my supplementary order paper would do is shift those uh, funds into the Cullen Fund, the New Zealand Superannuation Fund, and at least, at least then, sir, the, 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 reward, the, the, the resources, instead of being wasted by this government, would be kept for the benefit of future generations. Uh, Dr Paul Hutchison. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion... A point of order, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Uh, Mr Chair, before you put the question, I'd like an assurance from you. Uh, you'll be aware that we have submitted a large number of amendments. We had a, uh, some chat about this, you recall, last night. And I'd just like an assurance that you have personally perused those and checked them over uh, if we're going to move to a vote. I think it is a fair question, especially if you're going to make any rulings in respect of them. 
Let me firstly put out, put, make this point. When the chair makes a call for the House to determine whether or not it wants the question put, the chair has given considerable consideration to all factors. And to start challenging the chair at that point is actually a reflection on the chair. It is a reflection on the chair. And members ought to do that with some caution. I assure all members that I've given consideration to every possible aspect that I think it's appropriate for at this moment the House to determine whether it wants the closure. And accordingly, I put it. The, a point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, can you tell us which factors you have taken into account? Oh, I've, uh, that's entirely out of order. I have said I have taken all factors what into consideration. They? The question is that the question. A point of order, David Clark. Why can't you tell us what they are? Um, and, and I ask this with due respect, as a new member uh, who is not sure of the remedies available to me, as somebody who did not have the opportunity in the part one of the debate to speak to my um, SOP which I, and raise some germane points which I do not believe were raised in the debate as someone who hasn't had a chance to speak in point two at part two, as somebody who listened to more submissions on the select committee than anyone else, what remedy is available to me to be able to speak into this debate? In now this the remedy House? the member has now is to vote against the closure. I, I have considered, as I say, all factors. So the question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. Contrary, no. no. A party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 8 votes opposed. Māori Party. 2 votes in favour. Oh. Oh. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Order. Votes will be taken in silence and that will be upheld. No member will vote under jurious in this House and it's difficult enough to hear the votes as they are. The ayes are 63, the noes are 57. The question will be put. Members, a number of amendments have been tabled uh, by various members of the Labour Party. The amendments mirror those talked about yesterday. Uh, they seek to change words which are similar or change words that are, um, in, uh, 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 are an expression. Uh, a great number are vague in that it is very difficult to know uh, where they fit, um, where they should appear. There is, however, one exception and we have diligently looked at all of the amendments and that uh, is a vote that we are going to put now and it's in the name of a point of order. Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Uh, Mr Speaker, and I'm not making a reflection on the chair, but you have used uh, rather uh, uh, graphic language, as you have the right to do, to describe those amendments. Uh, now, I'm, when those amendments were placed on the table, you were the presiding officer and to the best of my knowledge, you haven't uh, 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 retired from the chamber. And, but again, I think given the, the description that you have used about those amendments, I'd like to know, have you looked through all those amendments, sir, given that you have uh, used those rather colourful mm -hmm. phrases, uh, which I'd have to question as to whether some of those might be in order, but that is your right. But I'd like an assurance that you have perused all those amendments because you have not left this chamber. Um, yes, I have. Uh, so the question is... A point of order. A point of order. Now, the member needs to be very careful about where he proceeds with these points of order. Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Oh, well, I'm, I'm entitled to make a point of order, sir. Um, and I'm not being facetious when I say this. You answered, yes, you have. I, t I take it you mean you have perused them, is that? Because there are two questions, I think. Correct. So the question is uh, the supplementary order paper in the name of Claire Curran to Clause 13. Clause 13 is amended by inserting the word control after limits uh, on the, and omitting the word ownership. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. The noes have a party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote.
New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labor. 54 in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes in favour. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. Mana. One in favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Order. Order. The ayes are 57, the noes are 63. That amendment is not agreed to. And the remaining uh, amendments that were tabled at 7.32 are ruled out of order uh, for the same reasons as last night. Um, standing order... What, yeah, uh, sorry, speakers, ruling uh, page 115, 4 and 5. So we move now to the rest of the amendments to part 2. Uh, and the question is that the Minister's amendment set out on SOP number 42 be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes in favour. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. The ayes are 83, the noes are 37. The Minister's amendments are agreed to. We move to Jacinda Ardern's amendments to replace mixed ownership model company with privatisation of public property company set out on SOP number 44. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Noes have it. Aye. Party vote. The clerk will conduct the party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labor. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Eight opposed. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. Mana. One in favour. Act New Zealand. One in favour. Uh, one opposed. United Future. One opposed. Are you point of order, yes, Brendan? Or? I meant to say in favour. Sorry? I meant to say in favour. In favour. Yes. Um, yep, you've got that. Clerks have noted. So the ayes are 57, the noes are 63. That amendment is not agreed to. We move to the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove's amendment to replace... 10% limit with 1% limit where it occurs, set out on SOP number 49. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. The noes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labor. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes in favour. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. Mana. One in favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Eyes are 57, noes are 63. The amendment is not agreed to. We move to the Right Honourable Winston Peters typescript amendment to insert a definition of person in new section 45p2. Question is the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Noes have it. Noes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labor. 34 in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. 
New Zealand first. Eight votes in favour. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. <coughs> Mana. Uh, one vote in favour. <coughs> Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. The ayes are 57, the noes are 63, the amendment is not agreed to. We move to the Honourable Trevor Mallard's amendment to replace new section 45Q2 to provide that mixed ownership model companies must comply with the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi set out on SOP number 55. Question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Noes have it. Aye. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes in favour. 